Hey guys, I am DC, host of Our Side Jive, and I want to welcome you to my daily dose. It is Saturday, August 17th, 2019, and I am at the Poor Shack, 250 South Main Street here in Keller, on the patio. My siege on normalcy continues day 17, so let's talk some rock and roll. On this day in rock history, guys, the Beatles began the most important period in their development. No kidding. They played their first show of their initial Hamburg residency at the Indra Club on August 17, 1960. The group have said over the years that the time they spent in Hamburg, which involved three stints between 1960 and mid-1962, is responsible for changing them from just an ordinary band of teenagers into a tight, tough rock and roll band. Along the way, these guys discovered pills, became a quartet when Stu Sutcliffe dropped out, and perhaps most importantly for their image, began to sport what would become known worldwide as the Beatles haircut. Here's a side note. Stuart Ferguson Victor Sutcliffe. These guys with these four names, like, isn't that crazy? Most people get three, this dude gets four. Stuart Ferguson Victor Sutcliffe. He was a Scottish-born painter and musician best known as the original bass guitarist for the Beatles. Sutcliffe left the band like on his own. He chose to leave the band to pursue his career as a painter having previously attended the Liverpool College of Art. Can you believe that? Well, I bet he had some regrets. Sutcliffe and John Lennon are actually credited with inventing the name The Beatles. This Beatles. The B-E-E-T-L-E-S Beatles. As they both liked Buddy Holly's band, The Crickets. So why not The Beatles, right? Well, the band used this name for a long time until Lennon finally decided to change it from the Beatles, although it wasn't backwards, to the Beatles, like we know it today. And Lennon decided to do that because he liked the, the word beat, B-E-A-T, so they changed it to the Beatles, B-E-A-T-L-E-S. How cool is that, right? As a member of the group, when it was a five-piece band, Sutcliffe is one of several people sometimes referred to as the fifth Beatle. Now, I know what you're thinking, because you, the other day, I know, I said that Pete Best was sometimes referred to as the fifth Beatle. You guys are going to call me on that, I know. But listen, Sutcliffe was just like... Pete Best and the manager Brian Epstein, producer George Martin, they were all from time to time referred to as the fifth Beatle. Okay, so that didn't refer just to one specific person at a specific time. In 1970, guys, the band, the band, put out their third album, Stage Fright. The songs reflected that the success of their previous two records was taking its toll on the group. This was most evidenced by the Rick Danko sung title track, which was inspired by writer, guitarist, Robbie Robertson's experiences with the condition when the band began to perform live on their own. Reportedly, the lyrics are about the pitfalls of fortune and fame which the band realized early on. The band drummer, Levon Helm, has written that the song is about the terror of performing. Others believe that the lyrics referred to Bob Dylan, who hired the band for several tours and continued to collaborate with them over the course of their career. Others suggest that Stage Fright could have been written about Dylan, but it could have been written about Robbie Robertson himself. 
Most actually believe it is actually about Robertson's experience of his own stage fright at the band's first live show. Time Magazine actually praised the song's image of a plowboy who, in the opening of the song, received his fortune and fame, but since that day, he ain't been the same. Besides quick success and some stage fright, the band was also plagued by drugs, issues over artistic control of the band, as well as issues over songwriting credits, the same things that plague many bands today. Of the five very talented original members of the band, and I say very talented because they really were, Rick Danko played electric bass, vocals, guitar, double bass, and fiddle. LeVon Helms played drums, vocals, mandolin, guitar, percussion. Garth Hudson, organ, keyboards, accordion, saxophone. Richard Manuel, piano, drums, organ, vocals. And Robbie Robertson, guitars, vocals, and percussion. You know, only Garth Hudson and Robbie Robertson are still with us today. So rest in peace, the rest of you guys. Now moving on, Wasp set themselves apart from other Los Angeles bands with their 1984 debut. The album has been known under three different names. The spine of the original vinyl release had Winged Assassins printed on it, while early cassette releases of the album had the name of the album's first track, which was I Wanna Be Somebody, printed in bold letters on the cover. The album is officially entitled simply Wasp. Now the record caused some serious controversy before its release, when one of its songs, Animal Fuck Like a Beast, appeared on the Parents Music Resource Center's list of the Filthy 15. The track was removed, but the publicity was enough to drive rebellious kids to the stores in droves to buy the album. Go figure. Got some birthday shout outs guys. Belinda Carlisle, Go-Go's lead singer, born on this day in 1958 in Hollywood, California. Happy birthday to Gilbert Gilby Clark, born on this day in 1962. Gilby is best known for his three year tenure as the rhythm guitarist of Guns N' Roses, replacing Izzy Stradlin in 1991 during the Use Your Illusion Tour. And finally, I've got Gary Talley. Gary was born on this day in 1947. He is an American guitarist and singer. He began his career as lead guitarist for the Grammy-nominated group, The Box Tops, who were famous for hits like The Letter, and cry like a baby. Guys, this wraps up my rock history lesson today. Now I want you to head over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Barside Jive Live, and check out my Tuesday and Thursday evening Barside Jive Live radio shows in the Vocal Media Studios featuring original singer-songwriters on Thursdays and cover and tribute bands on Tuesdays. Also, my rock star interviews and my rock and roll files playlist, as well as the other episodes of my daily dose of rock music that you're just finished watching. Guys, while you're there, you can subscribe for free. Just click that big ass red subscribe button. That way I'll know you're there and you'll also get notified as soon as I post new stuff. I'd appreciate your likes and shares of my stuff with your Facebook friends and your Instagram followers. Thanks so much for hanging with me today during this daily dose this afternoon. It's only 100 degrees out here in Dallas-Fort Worth. But I'm braving the sun for you guys. I want you to have an awesome evening. In fact, come to the Porsche Shack and check out Live 80 this evening, 9.30 p.m. show right here the Porsche Shack, 250 South Main Street in Keller. You guys have an awesome weekend, what's left of it. Don't forget to drink responsibly. Remember, you have just one life here, so let's make it count. 
I'll see you tomorrow. Peace, love, and rock and roll. Jive Live.com. There, man. Smoking.